evening. Welcome to Business Live. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for joining us. Coming up tonight, economy on a rebound after contracting the second and third quarter. We share what key players are saying government must do to sustain recovery. Also coming up, avoiding a tomato glut. Traders and transporters agree on a shift system which begins next year. And if you're planning to shop for food items this weekend for Christmas, expect prices to be on the higher side. Thanks for being with us once again. Details right after this break. Welcome back. We are going to be talking a lot about the state of our economy, uh, where we are at right now and what to look forward to. Beginning with the Bank of Ghana, uh, which believes the economy is on a rebound consistent with this recent available data. According to the governor of the central bank, Dr. Ernest Addison, there is evidence of some green shoots in economic activity gleaned from surveys on consumer confidence, which has bounced back to pre-lockdown levels. At the same time, business confidence is also improved, although the index remains below pre-lockdown levels. He disclosed this at the University of Ghana alumni lecture. The first half of 2020 showed that the global economy experienced a sharp contraction due to restrictions imposed to contain the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, survey data into the third quarter of the year points to signs of recovery, driven by the easing of restrictions and the decisive monetary and fiscal policy support. The recovery is expected to be gradual and uneven in view of the cautious behavior of both households and firms. Also, the COVID-19 containment measures vary across countries, and the recoveries will reflect these variations. Despite these early encouraging signs of recovery, the outlook for the global economy remains highly uncertain, with COVID-19 infections continuing to increase as countries ease restrictions, sparking fears of a second and even third wave of infections, requiring reposition of restrictions and leading to further slowdown in the world economy. The recent resurgence of the pandemic in the United States and parts of Europe leads credence to the uncertain part of the pandemic in the near term. Also, events related to the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic are still evolving and there is considerable uncertainty about the duration of the spread and how quickly countries will recover. The IMF forecasts that global growth will contract by 4.4% in 2020. If this materializes, the COVID-19 pandemic may possibly become one of the most economically costly pandemics in recent history. Peace notwithstanding, the recent announcement of coronavirus vaccines with more than 90% efficacy and the subsequent approval to administer these vaccines in the United Kingdom and other advanced economies has fueled optimism and restored some hope about a return to normalcy in the near term. Meanwhile, Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Ernest Addison, is calling for tough decisions to be taken to reorganize public finances and expenditure priorities whilst exploring more sustainable revenue sources to improve the fiscal economy. Public debt levels have risen following the necessary fiscal expansion in the short term to contain the impact of the pandemic. Hence, there is a need to design a plan to bring down the debt to sustainable levels to contain risks posed to future financing of the budget, the exchange rate stability, and financial stability. This framework will include a clear priority towards expenditure rationalization and efficiency, as well as improving revenue collection capacity. Ghana's public debt has reached 71% of estimated GDP at the end of September 2020, fairly above the maximum early warning sustainability threshold of 70% for market access countries. The country's debt service indicators and gross financing needs have also breached sustainability thresholds. The non-resident holdings of public debt, although declined, is still high at 59.9% of GDP, 
above the threshold of 45% for market access countries. Public cross financing needs are also above the 10% market access country threshold on the back of increased fiscal obligations, suggesting constrained fiscal space for growth spending. Although the external financing requirement as a share of GDP has declined and within acceptable thresholds, efforts would need to be put into place to increase buffer levels to help meet external, future external obligations. In ensuring financial stability, the financial sector will require constant regulatory and policy attention to identify and mitigate emerging risks. By and large, the economic impact of the pandemic may result in a higher non-performing loans and some capital erosion of banks. Hence, the bank is putting greater focus on identifying the early warning signals and initiating prompt corrective actions. The symptoms of a weaker bank are usually poor asset quality, the lack of profitability, the loss of capital, excessive leverage, excessive risk exposure, and poor governance conduct as well as liquidity concerns. In this respect, the Bank of Ghana will continue to strengthen all the regulatory measures implemented over the last three and a half years to maintain confidence and safeguard financial stability. Well, we'll still stay with the University of Ghana alumni lecture because the Vice Chancellor, Professor Ebenezer Odrowusu, has commended government for effectively managing the economy. According to him, the prudent management of the economy, despite the ravages caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, is highly commendable. Government's prudent management of the pandemic and its effects on the citizenry is highly commendable. This is evident in the low infection and death rate and high recovery rates. The director of Noguchi is here. If I give him a chance, I think he can lecture us the whole day on this. The potential risk going forward is fiscal challenges, that is deficit, as a result of a slowdown of domestic revenue and high expenditure from the management of the pandemic. And undoubtedly, this is likely to translate into rising debt stock. And this is what the governor is trying to battle with. Prudent fiscal management on the part of government here is extremely crucial, particularly in the year 2021, to forestall any dangerous economic slippages that could erode all the economic gains made so far as a nation. And I think he made it clear that all the economic gains for the past three years have been eroded. So now we have to set ourselves on the road to recovery. So in all, individuals, households, and businesses must learn from the pandemic and know that withholding unproductive consumption expenditure in favor of future in the form of savings is the best insurance against such unforeseen circumstances. I guess uh, the question then is how do we sustain this recovery? Well, government statistician uh, Samuel Kobneni is pushing for some targeted policies by government to fast track the much talked about economic recovery. Finance Minister Ken Oferata has projected a marginal positive growth by the end of the year, despite the contraction of the economy in the third quarter. Now, speaking on PM Express on Joy News, Professor Neem said a targeted policy could even result in appreciable growth for the economy by the end of this year. We are circumspect in predicting based on these things. And I like the way my two colleagues have articulated their point. Essentially, it depends on the interventions that have been put in place and the sectors that are receiving those interventions. And one is not too sure how people are going to react to the elections that we've just gone through and the festive period that is um, ahead of us. Mm. January, it's always, um, sorry, December is always mm. a tricky month because it's a festive period and one expects spending to go up mm. but given the elections one would have to be careful in saying that it will follow the trends during a non-election year so again i wouldn't put my head out and say that we're going to get out of um the contraction in the second in the last quarter of 2020 but all depends on the interventions that will be instituted if, if again i i, I asked myself is it about the waiting because a great sector did 
quite well, uh, but it, it looks like it was not strong enough to offset, to still push the economy up. Yes, it's, 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 it's essentially about the waiting. And again, if you look at it just from the numbers point of view, we saw 16 subsectors that expanded in the period um, quarter three, 2020. And only four subsectors contracted, and these were one would call the movers of our GDP. The, sub the subsectors that contracted were hotels and restaurants. That is not really a heavyweight, but the two subsectors that I would our tag as heavyweights are mining and quarrying, mm -hmm. which contracted by 16.9%, but the share of GDP is 13.9%. So mining and quarrying alone is taking four, close to 14% of our total GDP. And the other sector that we call um, a mover of the GDP is the trade repair of vehicles and household goods. That also contracted by 7.7%, and its share of GDP is 11.4%. So taking just these two sectors, we are talking about a fifth in terms of share of GDP, of our total GDP. So irrespective of what happens in the other um, 18 subsectors, these two sectors would continue to determine what happens to our GDP growth rate. And do you think that we should look at... Uh, uh, a policy well targeted policy because some have complained about jobless growth we are growing all right what policy direction and what sector should be targeted in our quest to uh, fast track the recovery because some are seeing that probe i mean even with a little intervention of government we've seen the contraction uh, slow a little bit if we could have done more maybe uh, we could have been getting out of this even q3 George, you are absolutely right. What we need to do as a country is to do targeting intervention. As um, my colleague spoke, Dr. Ankara articulated the various interventions. What I did ask myself is, even within the ICT sector, what are you going to concentrate on? Mm. It is about time we begin to look at very detailed level interventions rather than broad interventions. Professor Nim, uh, the government statistician, also cautioned against the projection that the economy will go into full recession by the end of the year. Data from the Ghana Statistical Service uh, shows that the economy has contracted for the second consecutive time, as we've been reporting. Now, some analysts forecast that the country could end the year with negative growth, but Professor Nim said it's too early to reach that conclusion. To respond to this from two-time perspective, and this is what we need to be mindful of once we're having a discussion around recession. So as, as I indicated, the computation of GDP is done from a time perspective, is done at two levels. One is to look at it on a quarterly basis, and the other is to look at it on an, on an annual basis. Currently, we've released three quarters of 2020. The first quarter of 2020 puts our growth rate as 4.9%. And subsequently, in the second quarter, there was a contraction of 3.2%. And in the third quarter, we've seen another contraction of 1.1%. We have collected data, or we are in the process of collecting data for the last quarter of 2020, and we have some data for October and November already. So I'll be hesitant in drawing a conclusion that if we are doing the annual GDP for 2020, at this point in time, one can conclusively say that on an annual basis, we are in recession. But clearly, from a quarterly point of view, that is comparing um, 20, 2019 quarter two with 2020 quarter two, and also comparing 2020 quarter three with 2019 quarter three, on both counts, we see that the economy has contracted. If you look at it on a quarter on quarter basis, that is looking at the period that is the second quarter of 2020, the period between March and June 2020, we saw a contraction of 0.8%, and also for the period July to September 2020, we've seen another contraction of 0.3. So from both a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis and quarter-year-on-year -year basis, we've seen that the economy has contracted. Mm. But then as I indicated for emphasis, for the whole 2020 to be declared as a recession for the country, one has to be circumspect. Let's hear next from economist Professor Gofer Bopping, who believes Ghana is doing far better than many other African countries. When you look at it in relative terms, um, we haven't done badly at all. I think um, we can credit what we are seeing also to the mixture of monetary and fiscal policies that were quickly uh, deployed in response to the COVID-19. And therefore, we will say that uh, we avoided the worst moments. But I think what we are seeing should not surprise us because um, 
um, we, we largely we expected this that uh, we were we were not um, immune from COVID, the effect of COVID-19 and practically that um, we entered COVID-19 with a bit of um, a weak immune system also because we had just come out of the energy crisis ending 2015 and then we 2016 17 we walked into the financial sector crisis we we're just coming out of that and then covid hit so you realize that the economy has gone through a, a lot and this is expected i mean we said before that um, we should not um, um, be hopeful that we're going to get a, a, a v-shaped recovery that suddenly the economy will just um, rebound uh, to pre-pandemic level and that we are we 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 have a long way to go in terms of um, the recovery but of course um um, if you look at the, the various policies that have been put in place um, and then the effect of that in terms of the explicit formation of public debt, and it, it tells us that uh, we have quite um, some challenge ahead of us. And, and also, you also have to look at the recovery. If you look at the, the subsectors that are contracting, very, very, very significant. Um, uh, but of course, you can also see agriculture and then ICT sector that is holding us uh, 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 going forward. Meanwhile, President of the Africa Investment Group, Dr. Sam Ankwa, who spoke on the same program, also called for some stimulus packet to help revive businesses that have collapsed as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. There had been a sequence of events. We had gone through the energy crisis. We've gone to the financial sector cleaning. Um, and then all of a sudden, COVID from nowhere hits me. Mm. So obviously for businesses, there had been very turbulent times in the process. And then when the feel of COVID almost like coming to an end versus vaccine in the, in the near, mm. when we entered into the election period, what would have thought after election with a four year of Christmas coming, mm. the market is going to get stimulated. People are going to spend money. The, the four year will help to boost the other sector of the economy. Unfortunately, we entered ourselves into this uh, Electoral district as well. So again, you put a lot of local local investors into caution. Although when you go to the external market, it's not really, have a really part on that. But the local uh, market, local investors, obviously would exercise some bit of caution, and you know, because of that, also that had affected the economy. So on the ground, nothing much had changed. One would expect government to take aggressive aggressive steps towards us to be able to stimulate the economy and get out of, of this uh, recession and also boom the economy. And there are certain critical areas that we're looking for government to have a specific, deliberate policy drive. We're looking at ICT, it's so crucial. We are aware of the effect of the economy of the increase in ICT, what do you call it, broadband penetration. is well, well, well documented. But every effort should be made to encourage investment in this digital infrastructure, to increase access to internet. We need to increase our investment into digital sectors as well. We're looking at fiber optic networks, wireless networks, data centers. I mean, I appreciate the fact that government of acquired Airtel Tigo, but then they has to push forward where Tigo has to merge with Vodafone, would that be a perfect playing field between MTN and Vodafone? Government might put in place e-government system to improve efficiencies in revenue collection. Because at the moment, um, the revenue collection obviously is not up to what targets that they've been looking for. So efficient systems and ICT, e-government system, is so crucial at this stage. One will get out of this recession, also help in economic boom, traffic management, fraud, and also demonstrate leadership to the business sector. That they, we, have, we have been very hesitant to embrace the online tools such as the cloud. We expect government to take the lead on that. And by so doing, would we'll accelerate the economic activities as well. So I'll look at the state of our economy and what to work on as we head into 2021. In other news tonight, the Ghana National Tomato Traders and Transporters Association has declared its readiness to begin implementation of a shift system for trading the vegetable in order to avoid glut and post-harvest losses. According to the association, it needs government support to ensure that all market traders abide by the new trading system, which is set to begin next year. There is more in the following report. According to the traders, the unavailability of a regulation for trading tomatoes has caused a significant loss to farmers and other stakeholders in the value chain. The situation has caused the National Tomato Traders and Transporters Association to collaborate with government in formulating a shift system for trading. After 
to addressing a national engagement with the Ministry of Trade and Industry on the effects of the unregulated market, Chairman Eric said to four retreated the call that the association is ready to begin the shift system. And we know in business we say supply and demand. If the supply exceeds the demand, there will be an excess. And we know we are trading with a highly perishable commodity like tomato. And as I'm speaking now, we don't have any storage facility for our tomato. And, and as such, the association sat down together with Ministry of Trade so that we will implement a schedule system. If 100 people are within one market, we should share them in such a way that for the week, everyone will go and then bring the tomato into his or her market. So this means we will move down to the border posts. All the borders that we've been using to cross to Burkina Faso to buy the tomato. We, we need to alert the border officials. After doing that, we will implement the system. Technical advisor on domestic trade at the Ministry of Trade and Industry in Team Donko believes a new move when implemented will help local farmers benefit from their produce. They can regulate the flow of tomato into the markets and thereby avoid gluts, spoilages and also loss of capital. And this is what we are supporting them to implement together with ministries, departments and agencies or relevant local authorities so that we will make the schedule work and then we will have peace in the markets. The association will be engaging other stakeholders on the new policy to have a mutual understanding. Now, the U Tide every year comes with a lot of excitement as people make plans to stock up their fridges and storehouses with food stuff. But when the prices of food stuff um, are rising, many get worried. It's exactly a week to Christmas, and many food items from corn to eggs are becoming a little more expensive. Judith Outrid Tando has more. So we've been speaking to some local traders at the Malata Market Centre. And according to them, there has been an increment in the prices of their goods. And so we'll be speaking to some of these market women to understand what they think is the cause of this increment, as well as how, how badly it has affected their businesses. Traders at the Malata market say that prices of goods have increased as a result of duties, climate changes and the COVID-19 pandemic. Some have also attributed the hike to the Christmas season, saying such hikes are normal during these times. According to them, this has affected their businesses as customers are unwilling to buy their goods. <laughs> Surely, prices have increased. Maize used to be sold at 250 Ghana cities a bag. But now, it's being sold at 300 Ghana cities. For the foreign goods, I will attribute the price hike to export duties. The price hike for farm goods, however, can be attributed to the climate change. As you know, I'm saying, Papa. The prices have really increased. The fishes we sell here are all from Ivory Coast, and due to that, the export duties are very high. It has really affected my business. Affecting business, but prices are quite high. Now, normal because by now. The prices have increased, but it is normal due to the festive season. These are going for 10 and 11 cities, and the small ones are being sold at 8 cities. But during this season, we can get this for 8 cities. We know Sabia, every time I had this season, to say I got some same money there. They are turning 10, which means to say 8 cities. At first, it used to be sold at 60, with the highest being 19 cities. But now, it's going for 22, 23 or 26 cities. Contrary to the popular views, a local plantain seller 
at the market says her prices have rather gone low. She explains that the prices of plantain are usually low during the Christmas season. For her, business is booming. Oh, by God's grace, the price of plantains have not increased. This was also the case last year. For about six years, the cost of plantain was high until the past four years. Business for me is going well. Judith, our Tritando's report for Joy News. So if you're shopping this weekend uh, for the Christmas, you know what to expect. That's Business Live tonight. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you with our quick take for tonight. two things when we talk about quality there's the, the literally the basic quality you want to make sure that this uh, rice is clean it's you know devoid of insects foreign matter so we ensure that that's part of our you know our premise everything that is sold through the exchange is guaranteed for quality it means that it's certified by the Ghana Commodity Exchange before that it's actually certified our warehouses are certified by the Ghana Standards Authority and by the Securities and Exchange Commission they're licensed so we they make sure that we you know stick to all of these rigorous procedures when it comes to quality so anyone coming to buy through the exchange that is our stamp of guarantee mm -hmm.